good afternoon. Thank you, uh, Mark, for your kind invitation <laughs> and my good friends uh, for your support. Um, just like what uh, Richard has mentioned, uh, I think uh, this is always a great kind of meeting to come to because um, I am in the midst of people that, that supports the idea. And what I'm trying to do is just to show you another perspective as a dentist. How do I apply what you know, right? And together with what I can do, right? And see where we can go. So this is um, my little uh, sharing session. Um, in view of time, there's only like 30 minutes, I think. Yeah, 30 minutes. Yeah, I'm going to run, all right? <laughs> so um, technology. This is a, a clinic that uh, I set up. It's, um, it's my second practice. Um, it is called the Lingodontic Clinic for a while only. Uh, because once I set up this practice, um, have all this, the, this, this word is actually um, tang, tang, uh, stylistically done as a logo. Yeah. So, uh, but like I mentioned earlier, I'm a dentist, I'm a general dentist, um, trying to be more focused into a tang. Uh, I am viewed as being a, trying to be a specialist uh, of the tang. And uh, that is not allowed generally. So I have to take that uh, logo off and um, I put it back to DP Dental uh, Orchard. But I say life goes on. Um, we are not going to stop. Um, as I'm doing this lecture here, um, I'm also in the midst of preparing my, my lawyer's letter to answer to my regulators too. Um, but you can see that um, I'm, a, I'm a cost junkie. Um, I like to do <laughs> and learn things. So. Uh, I think one of the highlights is the, um, really um, giving a TED talk on the tongue and um, a TEDx talk in Singapore, sorry. And um, yeah, so uh, I have a bigger team. This is my focus team to actually help in uh, setting up this tongue practice. <coughs> and the tongue has many names in all languages, but I think in some language is literally lingual and lingual uh, speech and tongue is the same. So we need to get this going, not only just for the sake of uh, like say speech, but I think uh, the key point is airway or air to me. Uh, I'll explain a little bit more on that. So we focus a lot on the technology. And um, yeah, this is the slide that I want to share. Um, what I see is that you know, every one of us understand that food, water, and air is important. But many are paying just lip service to saying that air is the most important thing. They spend a lot of money on food and drink last week, and they spend zero on air. All right? And yet they say this is the most important thing. And they don't even realize that they're not getting enough of it. All right? So it is our, our, our chance now to really educate them to say that, look, you are one of those and yes, uh, we'll share one of the, the research from Lancet, right? It's one billion patient soon. So we have patient that doesn't know that they are suffering. And as a dentist, I have an opportunity to help in a few areas. First, extraction, but not extraction of teeth. I, I'm totally against it. Uh, it's the extraction of air. How we can help is we can change the, the structure Right, especially in the dental facial area. And uh, we can change the function, having uh, the malfunctional uh, therapical support to the, um, to the improvement. After that, once we can get more air into the body, we can help with the delivery of the oxygen to the cells. How we can learn how to breathe again, and how we can sleep better at night when we uh, can, again, like I mentioned earlier, uh, breathe with, uh, that uh, not snoring, not having the apnea, not having the upper airway resistance. And after the oxygen gets into the uh, cells, we need to talk about optimization of this utilization. And uh, photomodulation using uh, red light therapy, or just getting under the sun in the morning or in the dawn time, is what you need. And uh, to the, this morning, uh, uh, Dr. David Gazal, I think, talked about the inflammation. And I think, yeah, um, red light really will help with the uh, inflammation control. So I think this is uh, the part that I, I want to bring forth.
to my patient. And uh, to me, tongue is king. Uh, not to be sexist, but I think this is one of the most important organ that is totally underrated, right? Um, no specialist, no one looked at it for a long, long time. And um, a quick video. Right, so you have the tongue dancing in the mouth. Um, and even when a lot of people understand that we need to keep the tongue up, they don't understand how we can, how we should do it. All right, um, if we look at it, the, the ideal situation is that, yeah, the whole body of the tongue is um, up against the roof of the mouth. And that's just not the tip of the tongue. And you can see how much airway space and uh, it provides. If the tongue is down, then you have the blockage of the airway, even though when we're standing. And of course, then uh, some individual will do a head tilt chin lift to um, compensate. So, um, yet, yes, life and death is in the power of the tongue. All right, not in just what you say, but I think it's if the tongue stops, you die. Literally, simply. Right? So that we can't keep it uh, down, we have to keep it up. So for a baby, um, we can't get the sound, but um, I'm going to just simulate. He goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, he's really struggling to breathe. And, um, and we have another baby, right, just down there, enjoying his rest, right? Lip seal, and we just focus in his mouth, tongue is up. And this is first baby, look, the moment he's, he's on his back, he's turned his head. He can't breathe face up, right? The tongue is still up there, right? Now it detach. So um, we hope to be always when we are sleeping, like the second baby, and then we can really sleep like a baby. Right, suck solo brief reflexes, um, it's all tongue up, um, postures, position. And um, even on, when we're doing breastfeeding, look at all the cranial nerve, they're all involved um, in trying to help us. The moment the face rub against the nipple, right, the whole, whole head is then yeah, mobilized to turn. So accessory nerve actually fire, your face, your lips, your hypoglossal nerve, your glossal pharyngeal need to actually get going again. Swallowing, vagus helping you to um, uh, coordinate between breathing and swallowing. Obviously, um, scent and sight, all this is helpful and uh, vesicular cochlea helps you to uh, balance. Uh, you can really climb from your tummy all the way to the breast. So having all these 12 cranial nerves helps you to survive the first stage, right? If not now, when, right? So it's important. All 12 cranial nerves involved in breastfeeding. And think about it, chewing too. Just chewing. Facial, trigeminal, hypoglossopharyngeal. Uh, I don't think you want to chew like this, right? So you want to keep the neck straight so your accessory nerve is also helping out. So again, 12 cranial nerves all helping you to chew. So that's what I think like what uh, Dr. Uh, Baxter was just showing, that girl can't, can't talk, the tongue is uh, restricted. Just everything else is, um, yeah, have to compensate. And once you release the tongue, right, enabling it to now function in the right way, the rest of the cranial nerves will be able to help out and function na naturally, right? So um, Michelle also shared a lot of, about this, so I don't have to labor some points. And, uh, but I think uh, trying to be you know, the, a, a focused dentist right, uh, on the tongue, I, I, I want to talk more about the hypoglossal nerve. Right? Um, so important, but all of them are just doing their job to make sure we do this first, right? Protection of the caudal pulmonary system. Uh, before we eat, do anything, right? We can't breathe, that's it, we're done. So this is the most important thing that we have to uh, protect. And, uh, and, and some now is actually, you know, they're using hypoglossal activator. But, you know, all this is our artificial stimulation. Can you imagine, you know, sleeping at night, you turn on the switch and your tongue, is just go, oh, <laughs> now you're trying to sleep, right? Um, so if we do malfunction therapy, right, we can uh, stimulate this in a natural way. So with low tongue position, right, uh, yeah, sometimes we're not talking about a problem, just like a restriction. It could be physical conditioning as well. Using the bottle, using a pacifier, using... Uh, all kinds of stuff that you stick in the mouth, occupying the space that's supposed to be for the tongue, right? Uh, we run into issues. So with a low tongue uh, posture, we, we look into all these interconnected things that um, as a dentist, I can actually help out, right? Um, so 
that's the fashion, right? Um, uh, Dr. Zaghi today is uh, mentioning all about that, how we should <clears throat> just release this. But again, uh, we are facing, all the release providers are facing so much flakes from all over. Yeah. Uh, I think one day things will get very, very clear. But in the, at the moment, yes, we will call for more research, more, more uh, standardization, right? Uh, so that we can explain ourselves well. Um, one of the way to measure, but again, as I'm presenting this, I think it is also being, uh, is evolving. So um, for me, I, 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 I came up with a, a, a linguistic, uh, a bamboo stick to help with examination. And uh, eventually uh, version two would have all the um, gradation, Kotlow, right? Your mouth opening measurements and all this should be helping you to do your evaluation uh, really quickly with a disposable piece of uh, um, uh, instrument so that um, it facilitates everybody's um, way of um, measurement and evaluation. Um, so yes, uh, this is the way that we actually measure the TRMR. Uh, but one of the things that we want to really achieve is this good suction hole, right? The cave, right? And then after that, we move on and uh, a tribute to our French patient. So I always see this. Um, Eiffel Tower, you know, really. So when you see this, uh, especially in orthodontics um, lectures, right, they can do all kinds of fantastic work and they left the Eiffel Tower standing, right? Yeah. It's tough, right? Things are not going to stay stable and it's just going to uh, regress again. So uh, again, our colleagues and myself, I'm very dependent on uh, research. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a practical person. I'm an application person. I'm a, a dentist working in the clinic. I'm the ground troops. I need all of you to provide all this research to support what I'm doing. Or I lean on to all this so that I have my way and uh, like I don't get stopped by regulators. So um, <laughs> there are good, good uh, research coming through. The numbers are building up. Now it's coming to 600. Uh, this is about when 300 plus when, when the group um, published. So it's really showing us uh, good uh, reason to, to release for some patient and uh, the need to do myofunctional therapy before and after and, and the, the kind of improvement that we're looking at, all right? So um, before we start, definitely we need to uh, work with a team. So these are part of the team, I would say even. So they do the evaluation, they saw the problem, they refer to uh, our, the release provider like us, and then we help out and we did our own. Um, we ba I base it on a functional history form as well that I will look into, right? Um, it covers um, on the suck, and it covers the swallow, and it covers the breathe, and uh, scoring uh, against them when the parents come through. Right, help me to understand, and of course, there's a physical examination as well. So, with all this, um, I come to a conclusion that I share with my pa patient, and then uh, they make the decision and to, to release or not. Right, um, with um, our, our intervention, yeah, we get tongue that can uh, this is actually teetered, and now it's uh, free to move, and patient definitely babies are feeling better. And uh, we get them back to see the lactation consultant, right? Um, they, they need that kind of support. The parents need the support. They need to know that, you know, once it's released, it's not the end of the, work, uh, end of the problem. It's maybe the start of the recovery only, right? And um, for, for me, uh, we, we have uh, lactation consultants, uh, IBCLCs, uh, 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 that is actually very, very helpful. But again, um, like I say, the whole environment is still not um, structured very nicely to ensure that this is um, being provided to every single mother, right? So uh, we should work on this. Um, and the other reason why our tongue doesn't get up can be as simply as um, just um, feeding on the bottle, right? Six months into it, we are then down with um, abnormal palates, um, hypotonic tongue and uh, sleep disorder breathing when everything was normal. But again, is we are trying to stop this kind of uh, use of bottle. Anyway, we have no, no other alternative at the moment. Yeah, so uh, it's a first world problem. So uh, we still have to live with it. 
but um, but U.S. actually yeah came and stopped this further, but uh, this for another discussion, right? Okay, so mouth breathing. There's a fantastic video by uh, Dr. Herman Ramirez. Uh, in view of time, again, I, I don't think we need to run through everything, but uh, do do try to find it. But now we're having like guidelines to help us to look at mouth breathing. Uh, Nicole um, uh, shared this during the World Sleep Congress last uh, month or week ago. Um, that you know, mouth breathing is now part of the whole continuum of the severity of um, um, uh, breathing issues. So. I would like to share this with my, my pa patient all the time. Like, look, um, once you're mouth breathing, well, you're, 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 you're structuring your airway to be blocked, and then you have your craniofacial, including dental deformities, coming through. All right? So um, he's always like the, um, a mentor to everyone. Um, and uh, luckily, I met, I met him when he came to Singapore. And uh, he delivered this, this whole message to the ENT community. Right, uh, mouth breathing is never normal. But of course, um, the ENT, uh, not, not like everyone is like, Surish. <laughs> we look at, um, you know, looking at the mouth. To them, uh, they work on the whole nasal part. And I, I hope that more will, will, will go this way to work with the whole dental community, understanding like maxillary expansion does help out and then dental play a very important role in helping with uh, this whole uh, problem. And, uh, Yes, please use the nose every single moment. So uh, if we can get our tongue up, we can move the teeth to the side. So, so teeth are just like traffic cones, right? So if you can park your tongue up against the roof of the mouth, you can actually uh, ensure that this space is actually maintained. And as you grow, your tongue will grow, right? And that helps to grow the whole upper palate. And uh, whenever you put your tongue up, you generate a good amount of force, and uh, that is going to just uh, create this kind of uh, arches, right? Not the work of dentist, but the work of nature, right? Beautiful, good alignment, good curves, good um, planes, right? And uh, Kevin, yes, he shared that, right? Uh, ideally, by, by four or six years old, you get your width 20 to 30 mm, but uh, most of us are now one rung down, so we need to work on the tongues. And uh, Linda uh, shared this, uh, you know, oral dysfunction as a cause of malocclusion. And uh, it really, like say, give us a lot of um, um, chance to explain to patient uh, all these functional issues which we document down, right? Um, looking into various uh, components and then um, start our treatment. Working with a patient on oral malfunctional or using devices, right? Where we can, yeah, just like what uh, Dr. Phyllis has mentioned. So if uh, the child, as young as two, she already did her, her, her adenoid tonsillectomy. And she's, after two weeks, she's mouth breathing again and starting to snore. So what can we do? So we help her with um, getting this kind of uh, device to chew, right? So while she's chewing, she's activating her facial, her trigeminal, her hypoglossal, glossopharyngeal. So let's coordinate all this together again, right? Young, or this boy, his, uh, look at his mentalis muscle so tight, just trying to close his mouth. But um, trying to chew, trying to close, right? Now his tongue needs to elevate before he can swallow. If he goes lazy and try to like, just swallow with a truss or lateral movement, right? The device is gonna block him, right? He's, he can't swallow. But with the tongue up, right? Things get better. And, uh, and what if they can actually put some time and effort to it? A girl, nine year old, came in with some um, um, teeth uh, over in this position, right? Um, and uh, within a few months, yeah, we can get some good alignment. So as a dentist, um, I want to provide my functional kind of um, assistance to my patient and while I'm doing the orthodontics. So it's both soft and hard tissue management all at the same time. I will tell them that this is the primary issue. The problem is that they are not having the right habits. Right? And it's not because they're genetically programmed to look ugly at a certain age. Right? So, so we are uh, assisting, I'm facilitating right, their, their growth and development. So uh, even when they get a bit older, like 21, she came in with a good, uh, you know, overjet, class two kind of uh, malocclusion with deep bite. And uh, this is a, a while later, right? 
So what we have done is that really um, get her to use devices while she's... So how do they use it? Literally, I get them to wear it over their aligners. Uh, I use exclusively aligners, uh, Invisalign uh, particularly, so that, um, like I say, it's, it's so much easier and I can plan my movement. It's all digitized now, um, more sophisticated, right? So, and once I get them to wear the aligners over, they, they have to train their, their lips, right? Closure, right? They have to train their swallowing. They have to train their, their, their breathing too. And with this device in the mouth, they are able to press the aligners you know, tighter against their teeth. So that also gives me a lot more translational efficiency, uh, meaning that um, they, they don't have, they, it doesn't get out of um, fit. They don't unseat that easily. Right, so we get to our end point faster, or we don't have to do so many refinements. Right, so with that, um, we change her profile, and she slept better, so that her, you know, her, her venous pooling is less, and uh, she lost her double chin, and all that without extraction. Most importantly, all right, um, this is another patient, fourteen year old, and uh, she has high canines. So um, looking at that, most likely. Yeah, not most likely, but you know, she, she, she did get two other uh, orthodontic consult and they're asking her to extract some teeth. So I say, look, mm, if you can grow your jaw again, I can help you. Right, so based on Booth Law, you know, you want the bone to grow, right? Adapt some load to it. And, uh, and sure, she did. She wants to look better, right? So she put her tongue up, right? And uh, we work on her malfunction and then I grow her jaw with her. Uh, I'm following her lead actually, and look at the facial profile, right? The whole mid face actually um, project forward as well. So um, this is this is something that if imagine if we decided to just because one of the tooth is out of position and we extract that and put everything together, she'll forever with this small pump whole life, and and yes, maybe teeth are straightened, but she's ruined, right? Right. All the other consequences will be there. Uh, again, uh, uh, an 11-year-old with, um, you know, mixed dentition even. Um, we work on her. Um, she worked on herself. And um, over time, right, we grew the jaw. And uh, now we're even using less um, attachment. So uh, because I use the malfunctional devices together. And, and Invisalign comes up with um, things like this kind of wings at the side. So it works and double up as a twin block. So literally when a patient bites in, right, this device here will guide the jaw to go forward. Right? 2 mm every two months. So that you can you can slowly, you know, train the, the jaw to come more and more forward as you align teeth. So we are saving time and saving effort again, right? We are doing level and aligning, at the same time we're doing uh, mandibular advancement, right? And uh, so uh, the, the, the excluded canine now actually get back in. We're not done yet, so we're still uh, work in progress, but she is definitely not going to lose any tooth at all. All right, and a girl like this, um, like uh, what Dr. Hiller was just, you know, we, 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 we see these kind of cases, and she is already um, seen a neurologist, right? And uh, given the, the diagnosis of Tourette syndrome, and um, she says she can't do any, uh, the, the doctor can't do anything. 40% uh, chance she will be you know, living with this you know, whole life. 60% she'll be fine, but that is not going to take any chances. Coming to us, because we do neuromuscular dentistry, right, so the only way I can f I try to do is, uh, okay, I say, look, you just put your tongue up and uh, breathe slowly. So tongue up, breathe slowly, activate her parasympathetic system. Tongue up, then now stabilize all the rest of the cranial nerves. Right, she is able to now slow down. No more blinking, no more struggling, no more tongue thrust, right? And this is the first time she felt that she is not moving too much. And uh, okay, so the moment you see that she closed her mouth, right, on the big screen, right? So now she put her tongue up and she control, ask her to slow her, her, her breath down. And wow, it's, it's not mum. I'm not shaking anymore. So she'll turn over, look at mommy and, and, and give her a big smile, 
right? Say, hey, things are different, right? So this is the first consult. I, I don't know whether I can help her. I just asked her to just do that. Okay, Mark is looking at his watch. So this is after uh, three months of myofunctional therapy. She is herself again, all right? So she's a much happier child. No more of that uh, ticks and thorax. Right, since this girl complained of all kinds of stuff, right? Very, very typical kind of uh, list of issues. But her main one is actually burning, burning palm sensation. So if we look at our neck, the cervical um, plexus actually comes through, brachial plexus comes through the cervical area, right? If she's always forward ahead, she will have her shoulder roll forward and then it pinches on the brachial plexus and she has a pain in the arm. So by adjusting her malfunction, giving her a plate to bite on, Right, first month, mm, and all gone. And she has been asking many, many specialists for, for help. And uh, no one actually offered a solution until uh, like a dentist coming in to just uh, manage head neck posture from a tongue perspective. All right, um, and yes, rest and digest. So, and feed and breathe. So the tongue actually helps with the um, uh, vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve really helps a lot of this thing internally, your visceral organs. And uh, it needs to really be functioning well so that you have uh, your immunology, your digestive system, your sexual reproductive system all working well. All right? So the tongue up, activating the swallow, getting the peristaltic movement going, right? activating the sphincter uh, correctly, all this is very helpful. And um, of course, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, any compensation for air, which, is, which help us with uh, survival, primary survival, will, will, will change the whole head neck alignment. And then that would put on a uh, different uh, strain to the sternocleidomastoid or trapezius, right? So a gentleman like him uh, complaining about all his posture, right? We did a tongue tie release, myofunctional therapy. And uh, in three months, uh, we are seeing a much more uh, you know, straighter. This is, by the way, to be on record, um, is incidental finding, right? I didn't try to treat his back. I treated him for his speech and uh, yeah, his, his oral function. But you can see what happened to his back, right? And um, from here also, we see this old gentleman uh, with, again, all these uh, ticks and uh, thorax. And uh, on the right side now, I asked him to put his tongue up. And uh, there he goes, stop. I made him a splint, he doesn't like the splint, right? So the tongue helps. And, um, and from here, he's definitely much more stable. Okay, so electroceuticals, right? GSK and Alphabet spent 540 million pounds. They want to do a vagus nerve stimulator, right? In 2012. Obviously, I don't think it's uh, done because it's not available. Um, what they're trying to say is that this electro electronic implant will help you with all this. But we don't need an electronic implant, right? We just need to put our tongue up, we activate our vagus nerve, and we could have uh, also treat uh, our, our, our rheumatoid arthritis. Also, stimulating the tongue can actually get back to the brain. So there are some devices like the pawns that are actually uh, looking at this kind of uh, technology. Or in Chinese, we believe that if you put the tongue up, that actually touches uh, this on the yin jiao xie, which is just right here, right, right at the tip, right, right behind your, your incisor papilla. You connect the front back um, meridian lines. And this is very helpful for your health. So you have a very good qi circulation. Literally, your head neck is because it's su supported. You have a very good extension of your neck in the right way. Your circulation is better. Your lymphatic flow is better. Your neurology is better. And your posture is better. That's why it's uh, highly recommended. So when you learn qi gong and tai chi, your tongue is asked to be put up. So it's called shi di shang er. Or if you do your, your um, yoga tra training, yeah, it's also tongue up for breathing. And this is what this is all about, right? Okay, so for us, we use uh, technology also to, to, uh, to measure, um, uh, to be very precise, helping our patient to um, really get to the right position. And, um, and uh, we are able to help her out to align her teeth so that her jaw joint issue is lessened. But um, she always have this lateral tongue trust and this stopping us from closing the space. And uh, with um, correct habit correction, uh, we, have to, we end up with a very good uh, final position. But there's always a residue issue, free up the tongue, 
build elevation, good positioning. And uh, we use this, this whole workflow now right, to help our patient to, to really establish and measure what is the correct position. <coughs> Without guessing, we measure with a neuromuscular approach and then we do our scanning. Right, so we scan the bike in and we give it to Invisalign. We, we get the clinical positioning. So patient come in uh, with gain and all this uh, deviated bike. We get a spleen to um, properly in the six axis uh, measurement. She tells you that when she do her tongue up position and, and uh, yeah, and uh, wearing orthotic helps. And then once we prove that this is no longer in pain, uh, this position is good for her. We give this bike to Invisalign and use Invisalign to actually move the teeth to that position. And now um, she lost a tremendous amount of weight, right? Just trying to go through this. So for patient, adult patient, don't lose hope. They can be expanded. Look at her. The bike deviated, right? One tooth uh, actually excluded from the whole arch. What we did is we did this with Invisalign, right? Move it out. But if you show this to a colleague, they say, you all must be joking. Plastic, moving teeth like that. I say, no, the teeth are moved not by the plastic. It's actually moved by the muscles, right? It's just being guided by the plastic to a more better position. And then, yes, when she has all this arch, right? So we can actually get her to a right bite, right central midline. Her face is, um, I say, balanced. And, yep. So for adults, we have the ability to help them also. And lastly, yes, okay. Um, uh, Lancet say that last, just last month or the month before, uh, a billion patients in need of help, many coming out from China and, 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 and India, uh, my side of the country, and of course, USA and Brazil. And uh, I wonder why Brazil, right? So, but, okay, for, for Asian, we have a narrow build, so uh, there's a last high chance of us getting airway obstruction. And uh, uh, w, so, uh, World Dental Federation, or FDI, actually also asked for help for dentistry to be uh, a dentist to, to help out in terms of more university and national uh, dental association to train. And uh, early detection in children, immediate management, uh, screening and uh, using MAD, working with uh, medical professionals. <laughs> and I, I would like to report and yes, uh, we are already doing this for a few years. So last case, uh, he's my friend and I don't want him to die on me uh, less than 15 years. He'll be like 50 chance, 50% 50 chance of wake, not waking up, right? So we know of all these issues um, and he's on CPAP and uh, we can also use mandible advancement device. But yes, uh, but with my friend saying all this, we say, okay, let's go for maxillary expansion. So we, we again also use Invisalign, right? He's already a right old age of 36. Uh, he can't expand anymore uh, based on our term, but no, uh, we can. So get the align, alignment going and uh, with his tongue up, he went through uh, phrenectomy as well. And uh, this is after a, a, series, a few series of treatment, he lost a tremendous amount of weight again. And uh, now this is him, right? But it's good. So he lost 37 kg or like 80 pounds yeah. or more. Yeah. yeah, and he used to walk with a limp because there's pain in the knee. But now he's running marathons and uh, doing, yeah, he's doing trail running, sorry. It's 50 kilometers up and down hills. So life has changed. Wow. So, yeah, man, you can do it. And just share with your patient, it's like, no, it's really blame themselves, right? If they don't, don't <laughs> I get it. And if they get the right doctor, they get the right doctor, they get another 10 more percent to help, right? Or else they can minus off this 10 percent and then they blame it all on genetics. So I think uh, as a dentist, we have a, many uh, roles to play and uh, myofunctional uh, with a biosimulation and uh, expansion. So uh, reduction of uh, uh, inflammation and uh, and oh, we can hear.